Today, I'm going to talk about corset construction terminology. So, uh, the three kinds of corsets we've been talking about are the traditional corset that has been worn for centuries, um, the bustier, which is a modern corset like garment, which is either lingerie or outerwear, and the foundation, which is the basis for a lot of evening wear construction. So there's a lot of information about corsetry out there, many great books that you can find uh, to research. There are careers that have been made of people that work in corsetry for the costume houses, lots of detail, lots of interesting construction things. People really seem to enjoy corsetry. Um, but today I'm just gonna give you an overview of the terminology and talk about the main elements of corsetry. Uh, so first of all, we have fabric and boning. So um, within the corset area, there are many different types and weights of corsetry. If you were designing a corset for a period opera, where it's going to get a lot of wear and tear, perhaps the costume is gonna travel with the production and be worn for years, it's gonna be require heavy coutille, the first one you see over there, which is the traditional corset fabric. Um, coutille is unique that it's very durable. It has almost even warp and weft, so it's a, a flat weave that's very strong. Sometimes it's um, fused, sometimes not. Um, but that would be your, your best choice for a very heavy corset. Um, then there is a cotton twill, um, which would be probably the next heaviest in, in combination with the linen that you see. The linen would be um, a little more open weave, probably a little cooler to wear um, and has a really nice uh, even grain that you can see well, so you can really make sure that you're on, on grain. Um, and the twill is also really nice. I use twill a lot for my um, evening wear foundations. It's really basic, it's washable. Um, it's a nice durable fabric if you don't have coutille available. Um, as far as the voile or mesh, um, that would be considered a lighter weight uh, corset or foundation, perhaps for bridal, something kind of sheer. Some of the bridal companies now are doing beautiful, really sheer organza or, or mesh, um, very light, light little corselets that go under um, bridal and evening wear. And then we have the traditional damask, which is like this fabric with a pattern, which is kind of more decorative. So this is a, a modern corset that was made as outerwear. And you can see it's this pretty little um, damask pattern. Okay, so moving on to the boning choices. Um, first of all, what the most high end, which is considered the best type of boning is this spiral boning. So this metal spiral boning bends um, to the body. So you can do get those really interesting S curves that you see in corsetry. Um, and it comes in all different weights. It comes in a roll, as you can see, and then you can cut it. And then you have to buy these little tips separately that you, that you put on it. Um, plastic feather boning is also very common. Um, and again, it can be cut to size and um, sometimes it comes in a casing, a cotton casing, sometimes not. Sometimes you can remove it from the casing and sometimes not. Um, I like to get the kind where I can remove it and then sew it. Um, the third type that you see on the board here is called Rigeline boning. And that is a boning that is meant to be stitched on. You can see here on this watch how it's literally been top stitched on to the corset. So this is a lighter weight boning but um, really easy to use because of the way that you can stitch right through it. Um, and then of course we have the whalebone or the sticks or the um, traditional wicker that, that people used probably in times long past. So let's move on to the second um, group. So here we have the lacing element. So lacings are super important. Um, because um, they help with the subtlety of fit. So they are not really considered a closure because they're very difficult to get in and out of. But once the garment is closed, then you have the lacing in the back to help with the fit. And so if a person is bigger in the rib cage, 
then that lacing will pull a little tighter in the rib cage area or if they're a little broader in the high hip, that lacing will help adjust to the high hip. So the lacing will allow subtlety of fit and will allow that last little touch where you can get it just a little bit tighter to fit really comfortably. And also where you tie the lacing is really important. Here I have it once tied at the waist so that I can adjust here up to the waist and then again at the high hip area so that I can adjust that. It's a little easier to have two ties so that you can um, really work on that subtlety of fit and pull it in right where you need to pull it in. Um, and remember that lacing can go either in the front, the side, sometimes two sides, or the back. And that also depends on where your closure is. Now, as far as constructing the lacing, there are various ways that this can be done. Um, at the very top, you're going to see eyelets and grommets. So the little, little miniature size eyelets would be used for a more delicate corset. And then the bigger grommets, you see the size zero, double zero, probably something like this where you have a really heavy duty, big lace up, you would use the bigger grommets. And then um, the other thing that could be used would be the eyes from hook and eye tape, which is What's been done here, the little metal eyes have been used for the lace-up. Or also, you can see the hooks that um, you can use for lace-up, kind of like a shoelace deal. Um, button loops are fun to use. There you can see the pre-made bias loops that can be inserted in the seam and then used to lace up. Um, and then there's different types of lacings that we can use. So you can see cording, ribbons, um, rouleau, which is the biased uh, spaghetti, um, or cordings can be used. Some are, are more considered lightweight and some are more durable, so it just depends on what kind of corset you're creating, uh, your, your lacing choice. All right, let's see what we have next here. Um, next we have um, the uh, closures. So, um, the most common kind of closure would be hook and eye tape. So you can see on this beautiful Dior foundation that the foundation is underneath the dress. So first the hook and eye would be closed and then the dress would be zipped or, or fastened in some way over that. So hook and eye tape is a really, um, it's a good solution for a closure. And you can see there also have a sample of a, of a hook and eye tape that has a double spacing. So you can always go a little tighter if someone's you know losing or gaining weight, you get you have the the double row there. Separating zippers are work for um, uh, corsetry, especially for foundations where you're you're doing them under a garment. I always get a little nervous with zippers because if you're in a fashion show situation or a show situation, if they break at the last minute, it's always really awkward. Whereas with hook and eye, you don't have to worry about that. But a zipper is, is definitely a good choice and it's also a decorative choice. It's kind of a modern decorative choice having an exposed zipper. It's very kind of cool looking. So um, the busk is considered the most traditional option. So you can see there, um, I'll show you a close up in a minute, but that is a, uh, a very stiff uh, metal piece that um, has loops and little um, posts there that these fit into. So it, it doesn't bend much and it gives you a really firm center front. Um, and so this would be considered the most traditional. Also, we have underwires. Um, uh, if you do an underwire uh, choice, um, that's a that's a, another element you might need. And the Petersham ribbon is really important for the waist stays. So um, in traditional corsetry, there's always a ribbon at the waist and the Petersham ribbon is really important because it steams and moves and stretches. So um, let me just show you here where we have the mannequins on. We have the, um, the ribbon here at the back. So when the person puts on the evening gown, the first thing they do is secure the ribbon and then do the hook and eye closure or whatever is being done on the, um, on the waist. So it's also really important in setting the distance between the waist and the bust. 
So um, the, that Peterson ribbon at the waist is really important. Here's one more little closure I wanted to show you, which is um, a button front bustier. So this is considered a lingerie piece. So it's, it's fitted, it's snug fitted, but it's not tight. Um, so the buttons work here and they look very um, delicate and pretty. But for the most part, you wouldn't really use buttons um, for this tight of a garment because they might pull. Now, um, before we leave this, um, this video, I just wanted to mention that this company, Richard the Thread, has all of the um, corsetry um, supplies that I've mentioned here and more. They have the coutille, they have the hook tape, and lots of supplies. If you wanna check them out online, they're a really great company. Okay, let's take a closer look at those supplies.